Good afternoon. It's an honor to be part of the ceremony and to help carry on the proud traditions of UC Berkeley. As Speaker of the Assembly and Regent of the University of California, I'm pleased to take part in the inauguration of Chancellor Nicholas Dirks. The ceremony we're engaged in today is part of UC Berkeley's rich, varied, and celebrated history. UC Berkeley, the home of the physicists who identified new elements, paleontologists who discovered prehistoric sites, the faculty who fought for shared governance, and students who fought for free speech. Berkeley, the home of the pioneering Center for Labor Research and Education, a vital tool for advancing just wages and working conditions for California's workers, the backbone of our economy. <laughs> Berkeley, the proud home of 22 Nobel laureates, a US, po a US poet laureate, and more than 3,500 Peace Corps volunteers. But UC Berkeley has never rested on its laurels or its laureates. Every day the research goes on, the activism continues, and the advances stack up. And every student who walks through Sather Gate has the opportunity to become another Steve Wozniak, another Earl Warren or Joan Didion. Or better yet, every student here has the opportunity to make a name for themselves by using the talent and intellect that UC Berkeley hones to make discoveries and explore pursuits we can't even begin to fathom. As speaker and as regent, I have a unique privilege to help fulfill the mission of this university to succeed as a public university, providing accessible, affordable, high-quality education. Yes. You see, the state of California and the University of California are both coming out of the fiscal and programmatic difficulties caused by the Great Recession. And yes, there is still need for continued prudence, but there's also a need to look at reinvesting and reinvigorating our mission. It's time to make sure that this world-class university still attracts talented students from not only across the great tapestry of California, but across the globe. And those students and their families shouldn't have to take on a mountain of debt to obtain a degree. I had a chance to sit and spend time with Chancellor Dirks when he first came to the Capitol in June and again since then. And my colleagues and I are really looking forward to our continued work with him over the next several years. Now, the Chancellor has written several books on the British Raj system, so he should be well prepared to deal with my colleagues on the Board of Regents. <laughs> His time spent at Caltech will probably help Chancellor Dirks appreciate the physics-defying Rube Goldbergian uh, nature of education policy and finance in California. <laughs> and yes, that's Rube Goldberg, engineering UC Berkeley, class of 1904. <laughs> there are 10 campuses in the UC system, and they all know that Berkeley is my favorite. If the other chancellors speak to each other, they'll note that I offer them all to be my second favorite. <laughs> but uh, Berkeley is the flagship of our system, and it is a place that had a tremendous impact on my life. So this institution has a very special place in my heart. It has a special place in the history, and more importantly, the future of the state of California. The first chancellor of this great institution Clark Kerr once said that he believed that the knowledge industry had the power to be as transformative for America as the railroad industry and the automobile industry. And that's certainly true. And I believe that UC Berkeley is the global headquarters of the knowledge industry. What is also true is that 53 years ago, the state legislature in the three segments of the state system of higher education entered into a great compact with the people of California the master plan of higher education. More than a concept or a plan, it was a promise. A promise of access, a promise of affordability, and a promise of opportunity. With the eyes of the world always looking to Berkeley, 
this campus has the responsibility to constantly and consistently demonstrate the leadership that ensures this promise is kept. Chancellor Dirks, with your inauguration today, you commit yourself to the stewardship of one of the finest public institutions in the world. With your inauguration, you commit yourself to the success of every student on this campus and to professional growth and economic security of the university's faculty and staff. With your inauguration today, you commit yourself to fight for justice for working people, and this university must set the example of respect and demonstrate to young people that hard-earned wages should always be enough to support a family. Let me be clear. The University of California cannot fulfill its mission and remain a world-class institution unless it treats all its employees equally and equitably and treats them with the same tender care that we treat our students. <laughs> Chancellor Dirks, with your inauguration today, you commit yourself to maintaining a diverse and dynamic campus that is safe and welcoming for all. With your inauguration, you commit yourself to working tirelessly to ensure that this university will remain accessible, affordable, and academically second to none. With your inauguration, you assume the mantle of leadership to keep the promise that California made 53 years ago. The mantle of leadership to fulfill that promise is the University of California, Berkeley itself. The mantle of leadership to help ensure that the entire UC moves in the right and just direction in all its endeavors. Chancellor Dirks, please know that as long as this university remains dedicated to serving the students it was created to serve, my door and the door of all my colleagues will always remain open to your administration. So in closing, I'd like to just offer my congratulations to you, Chancellor Dirks, and to say, go Bears.